So guys, as I said before, today we are going to do air brakes and in cap and air brakes. Okay, so we will start with in cap. And then we will go to the most interesting part of the entire course, so right? air brakes. Ooh, air brakes. Air brakes. Um, so in cap, in cap easy. In few words, you just finish doing uh, coupling, right? Or section C, because in case of C, we did coupling first, and then we, we, we did section C, and so you meet the examiner next to the driver door. Okay. Uh, we are using day caps, okay? Unless I will get the sleeper truck for us. Uh, your emergency equipment will be next. The fire extinguisher will be, if you open the door, it's next to the driver's seat. Okay, it's locked there, you know, like straps, strapped to the floor. And um, reflector tra reflecting triangles and spare fuses, usually box is glued on the top of the, sitting on the top of the reflecting reflecting triangle box. You will need just go inside, keep talking to the examiner. So, uh, because examiner doesn't know what, what you do and they, the examiner trying to realize what, health, what, what to do. So if you're climbing inside of the cab, so what should I do? Go and hit the passenger side, so keep talking. Keep talking. Okay, go and say, this is my reflecting triangles, make the eye contact. Reflecting triangles, pair of uses. This is my fire extinguisher, which is properly charged, securely mounted. Okay, you don't need to explain spare fuses, you don't need to explain reflecting triangles, you need to point on them and name, and say they're here. Okay? Reflecting triangles, spare fuser, fuses, a fire extinguisher. Okay, now it's time to check our external lights. What is external lights? Lights. 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 If they're working, actually, working or not. Right? Before we were checking lights if they clean functional, broken, missing, not missing, right? And their color, and proper color, right? Now, yeah. I think so. now we're gonna check if they actually work. Okay, guys, like the same as in your car. The same as in, uh, uh, as in your car. You just got into the car, you put the key in, you didn't do anything on the key, you're trying to turn on your headlights. Are they gonna work? No. No. Okay, why? Because you need to put it, turn ignition on, as we say, or put it in accessory. Let me tell uh, a few words about <coughs> key positions. On the lock on, on your truck, it's one more position for the key, uh, one more than is in your car. Okay, so this is the key lock, right? And this is your key. So usually this, this is off position, that vertical. Okay, in this position you can Take your key off or put it in, right? So, so this is off position. Next position is what? Any guesses? The One click to the right. Like ACC. ACC, which is uh, ACC, it's accessory. ACC is accessory. If you will put the key there, what's going to happen? Your dashboard will come on, right? Yeah, all the warning lights will come on. Some of them will go off. Some of them will stay on. Okay, so now you can actually start your vehicle. Okay, well, I will say, we will discuss how to properly start the truck. Okay, it's important as well. So now, accessory. What is third position? It's starter. It started, right? 
there is a spring. The key won't stay in this position, right? You click it there, you're firing your engine. If you release it, what's gonna happen to the key? It will go back to access and stay. When your engine is running, your key is in what position? Accessory. Accessory, okay? It can be an accessory when your engine is running or when it's not. And we will use boss. But this is your car. Okay, in the truck we got one more. We got one more. And it's battery. It's battery mode. Okay. Battery mode, when and what situation we're using battery modes? Uh, well, you need to roll down the window. Say something. You need to adjust your mirrors. You need your fan or whatever, or AC. AC is not going to work. So fan. You need to powerize your cab to, I don't know, French microwave. <laughs> yeah, yeah, charging. So you powerize the cab if you will put it in battery mode. Guys, in the school, until I will get your license, okay? Please avoid putting key in the battery position. In what situation you see you will, you will put? Even though I will explain it, I will keep explaining it. When we will go in the yard and we will work on the truck, I will say it every single morning, every single time we start our class, I will say, guys, avoid it, put it, or leave it in battery position. Why? 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 Tell me, why? It's drawing battery. It's drawing battery. Okay? Uh, why is it easy to leave it there? Because you got this habit. When you're turning off your car, what do you do? You click into it all the way to the left, right? Mm -hmm. Boom. Huh. In your car, yeah, that's the right thing to do. It's in all position. In the truck, uh -uh. it's in battery. Real story, okay, January or February, a year or two years ago, New Brunswick. One of my students jumping out of the truck, just passed the test, and saying, hey, hey, boss, hello, oh, everybody, congratulations, it was cold, it was about freezing. Hey, hey, boss, everybody is giving you a hug, oh, good, good, great dog, good dog. And the examiner says, okay, guys, I'm gonna go and take, take a break, take a lunch, so well, I will see you in an hour or so. I'm coming back in an hour. Then let's start with the procedure, right? Pulling the cars, reading instru I mean, instructions, then you know, they walking around, doing some pretty. By the time, by the time they're doing in camp, steering goes inside of the truck, booms, it's dead. It was cold. The battery wasn't perfect. It's dead. Mm. Mm? The test is done. Instead of uh, congratulating other students with passing the test, no, I'm congratulating, congratulating um, road assist guy with getting like five, six hundred bucks <laughs> for the call. Okay? Everybody, for some reason, you'll see it. When you're changing with another student, you're hitting the truck to do maneuvers, somebody, I mean, shut the engine, and you see that key is in excess. Let's let's make a deal. Every time when I see he's an accessory, you owe me five bucks. Mm -hmm. I will be mean enough <laughs> by the end of the course. <laughs> Avoid it. <laughs> Avoid it, putting in bed, okay? Imagine you're somewhere in Nebraska now, right? It's minus 35. Mm -hmm. You stopped at the uh, fuel line to fill up the truck or whatever. Okay, you shut the engine. You went to the truck stop to get a receipt or something. You're coming back. If batteries are not perfect, probably you cannot fire it up. Okay. So it's better to turn off? Or what? Always. If you need to turn to sh shut the engine off, cut it off. Put it in off position. Make sure you can pull it out and put it in them. That's how you're making sure that it's in off position. Okay? Um, so, for up, yes sir. No, in battery position it's not. Yeah, that's that's why I said that's how you can check that it's in off position. If you can pull it out, it's off. Uh, well, yeah, 
Uh, yeah, you, you're not you're not taking your kid. Yeah. So if you can pull it out, it's inverted. It's not inverted. It's in off position exactly. If you can take it off, it's off position. Okay. You're not you 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 don't have to take your key have your key with you every time you're living. You don't have to. You don't have to. Guys, imagine your test. Um, I told you, if you remember during our orientation class, I told you that you got for each exercise you do, you got certain amount, certain amount of uh, looks, as called looks, when you're going out and look, right? How many times for the upset? How many times you can go out and look? Twice, twice, two times. Just imagine, and how, how much time you need to do the exercise? Three, five minutes, three minutes? So if you will fire up my truck two times during these two minutes, and then another two times for the parallel parking, and one more time for, you're gonna burn the freaking starter completely. <laughs> so no, we're not doing that. I know that it's stated somewhere, somewhere in the paper probably when you're doing your course, it's saying that you have to, or uh, on the knowledge test, every time when you're leaving the truck, have the key with you. Mm -hmm. We don't do it. We don't make sure that you, and pull the air brakes, put it on the parking brakes, it's in neutral, and then you're leaving the truck using three points of contact. That's what you must do, otherwise you will be disqualified. But you don't have to shut the engine every time, so that's why. Make sure it's in off position, not in bed. Okay? Uh, I will explain you when, before, when we will finish up doing the external lights, I will explain how we do um, safe start, safe engine start. And this is very important as well, okay, to know how to do it properly. And <coughs> I'll explain why. So, to make your headlights uh, working, headlights, high beams, turn signals working, uh, what position you need to put your key in? Accessory. If it's in off position, okay, you cannot, you cannot fire that. Wrong. Wrong. Okay. Um, so what lights, how do you see it? What lights are gonna, are gonna be working? What, what, what lights are not gonna work? Uh, if you want to put it in accessory position. Let's say you're in off position or battery or whatever. What lights are gonna work? Headlights. Headlights are not gonna work. Okay, this is knob, um, it's um, on your left. Under the steering wheel, on your left, it will be knob for the light. And it's saying off, so this is off. And this is, or this is uh, P, means park, right? And this is on, okay? Sometimes there is another uh, showing something like that. This is your um, fog lights, okay? Parking lights. When you turning your lights on, make sure, first of all, make sure you will click it twice, okay? Because this is parking lights. We are not checking parking lights. All the way to the right, click, click. Then it's supposed to turn on your headlights. But if you want to put it in accessory, only two lights is gonna work. Parking. Whenever you will put it, it will turn on parking lights and uh, four-way flashers. Okay, but we need to check much more. We need to check headlights. We need to check turn signals. We need to check four-way flashers. Stay at home. Okay, so one click from the off position. What are you gonna see on the dash? Around the cluster. 
lights will go on. Some of them will go off. Now you can turn on your headlights. So two clicks. Examiner is in the front. Two clicks makes your headlights on. Examiner shows you thumbs up, for example. Sometimes examiner will tell you what light to, 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 to check. Sometimes. So just listen instructions. Okay? Uh, sometimes like thumbs up. Okay. Every time when you check this light to avoid confusion, what we need to do? Turn it off. Don't forget it. Don't go headlights on the top of or high beam on the top of low beam. So click, you're checking the headlights, you got thumbs up. Turn it off. Now, pull the lever, lever, right? Pull it to flash high beams when your light's off, when your headlights is off. Pull it. You will see the um, light indicator on the dash. The blue one, right? Yeah. True. <clears throat> Examiner shows you thumbs up. Okay, release it. Pull. Second one checked. Third signal, thumbs up. Another third signal, thumbs up. Four way flashers, thumbs up. Turn it off. Examiner will go to the back. Sometimes you need to look outside and say, Could you please help me to check my tail lights as well? Okay. Examiner goes to the back. Look at the examiner in your driver's top mirror, right? And do the same. When the examiner is ready, how do we check what lights we need to check? Right? Tail lights first. Right. Tail lights. How do you check tail lights? Turn on the lights. Headlights. Yeah. Headlights. It's the same as headlights. Click, click. How many clicks? Two clicks on the number. What do we do? Turn it off. You want to do brake lights now? Do brake lights. Thumbs up. Turn signal to one side, turn signal to the other side. Turn them off when you see. And forward flashers. So, how do you check the tail lights? Sorry. It's the same as headlights. The same as headlights. When you turn on headlights, okay. cleaning knob twice, it turns on the tail lights as well. Okay. They go on at the same time. Okay. Got it, right? When the examiner helped you and checked it, check the lights, the examiner goes back to the cabin. Now, you're waiting for the examiner with your seat belt in hand. Hold it. Because when the examiner will hit the passenger seat, he will need to explain the seatbelt. This is my seatbelt, no tears, no trace, no read. Latches adjusts properly. Okay. Now it's time to do what? Any guesses? What's going on? Start the engine. Well, well, well. Let's talk about starting firing up the engine. What's going to happen? How do you think? If you will fire it up, just Get in the, into the truck, put the key on, the key in, and fire it up. No. Are we, are we not it probably will be expensive. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, know. maybe it will be just a couple faults, the a uh, couple uh, key, you know, like cycles will fix it. But in, in some situation, you will you will be waiting for the city. What happens is there are five, sometimes five different computers on the truck. It's a complicated system. Everything there, engine managing computer, top managing computer, transmission, climate, uh, and stuff. It's like a lot of electronics. They need time to make cell diagnostics, okay? Before firing it up, Sayyad. You know there is a rule in Texas. Everybody who fires, who making quick start on the cold engine, you can, you can shoot this person. From your revolver. Please. Please pay attention. It's important what I'm saying. Yeah. Pay attention, okay? I will ask you. You're just reading something. No, no, no. I'm explaining how to do safe start for the engine. It's safe start not for somebody's safety, for your safety as well. For your wallet safety if you want. If you will burn the some engine uh, managing computer, uh, your company are not gonna be happy. And I'm not gonna be and, you know, and your friends not going to be happy in the beginning of the class you will burn the questions. <laughs> and everybody goes home. Okay, you put it in accessory and wait. 
at this point it will perform some diagnostics. All lights, dashboard lights, will come on. Most of them will go up, some of them will stay. You wait. Arrows, your gauges, will perform cell diagnostics as well. Oops, oops, you wait. Sometimes it's five, 10 seconds. You need to wait this time. It's not a car. Car, you can fire it up right away. It's much less, you know, everything is smaller, everything is protected, better protected than the drug. And the drug, that's what you do. You wait. Once arrows return to their position, initial positions, most of the lights disappeared. Now you can perform the start. Vroom. Engine goes, then you see ABS light coming on and going off if your system working properly. So you've got two lights, one ABS light on the cluster, another ABS light on the side of the trailer, in the very back. Right. If something's wrong with the ABS system. In most cases, guys, it's just dirty. It's just dirty sensor. <laughs> you were driving in the mud or whatever, picking up some or something. Or in some cases, maybe it's broken wire. But it will stay on. If on the dash you have ABS light, it duplicates your light in the back duplicates it. I know that some guys know what they do because if, if uh, state troopers, I mean, if you're being stopped on the way station for the, <laughs> for the inspection, and if you have, you know, any, any check engine lights, so you're getting at least warning. Some people, they cut electrical tape, <laughs> put it there. Oh, yeah. and they, they come into the light, maybe it's like, <laughs> maybe the system is working properly. Oh, don't do it. Yes, you got it, right? If you have ABS light, your light on the side of the trail will duplicate. Okay. Engine started, engine running. Now, another scenario. Uh, let's say we were doing light check, right? So we put key in accessory a few minutes before, right? So your computers, your truck, performed the cell diagnostics before. Now, when the examiner hits the passenger seat, do we need to do it again? Turn it off and do it again? No. You can do, it's called quick start because your key was an accessory for a while. You got it. When are we doing, so yeah, when are we doing quick start? Quick start? Mm -hmm. Never. After. What do you think, Gabo? When, when are we doing quick start? Dios knows. There was, when are we doing quick start? You just said after we've already had the key in the, if you, in the mission already. Because you listened to what I said. Please listen. <laughs> There's no other point in being here. If your key was an accessory for a while, you can do quick start. You don't have to do it. Turn it off and do it again. Or let's say scenario, you're doing standard transmission. You're going uphill. You kill the engine. Burns. Okay. Uh, if you will, you, so there is no need in doing the cycle, the entire cycle, turn it off and stop. Just put the clutch, fire it up, choose the proper gear and go. So you will get warning, you will not kill the test. Yes, sir. It's it's automatized there, so there is so no like there is no like yeah warming up like we we got on the old Soviet you know <laughs> like it's all automatized. Make sure you got proper 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 diesel, so it's not uh, gonna gel ice. Okay, so what is the safe start? Safe start. Safe start. Yeah. Put an accessory for how long? Until lights will disappear lights, yes. and arrows will go back. Mm -hmm. and then. Okay. So we started up the engine. Now it's time to check what? Cluster, right? We got our cluster and we're going to check our gauges. 
So two gauges, first two gauges, secondary and primary air gauge, secondary and primary air gauge. Uh, one more thing I need to tell you about, uh, about um, building up the pressure. So at this point, how are we checking our air gauges? How are we checking? So building. Building up pressure until what? Until what happens? Cuts off when? Between 120 and 140. Never say at 120, never say at 140. Between. Between. That's what it says on the handbook, that's what we're going to do. And it's very important, especially today when we will be doing breaks, to say exactly what it is on the handbook. Okay? In some cases, you're giving uh, some sector, right? So it's gonna, uh, my emergency brake system is gonna, um, my boss, uh, I mean, uh, yellow and red button should pop out when in between 20 and 45. Between 20 and 45. You cannot say 25, 45. You cannot say 25, 40. 20 and 45. Even if you will say 45 to 20, it's gonna fail your test because we cannot make any mistakes, any mistakes on the brake. Or, for example, my low air warning device system is going to activate around 55 psi. Not above, not below, not at, around. Very important, these small details for me. 155, right? 120? No, no. 55. No. It cuts off. Okay, you're building up pressure until governor cuts off between 120 and 140, exactly oh. as it is on your printer. Okay, 120 and 140. It can be different, you can adjust it. Just flat screwdriver, you know, one minute and you adjust it. How much you want it. Some guys doing 150 because they have air tools with them. So <laughs> what's that it's air not good for system, it can start leaking, you know. Yes. So what's that air drops up to uh, between, one, between 20 to 45? It's air brakes, yeah. Then emergency brake system is going down there. And boss. Emergency brake and... Uh, emergency and... Uh, no, no. Yellow and red buttons. Is yeah. going to, boss button is going to pop up. 45, yeah. So, we're building up pressure. We're checking our air gauge by building up pressure until governor cuts off between 120 and 140. We're gonna do it three times during the test. Three times. Three times, please, very important. It can cost you the test. <laughs> it can cost you failure. Every time when you must, when you require to build up pressure, it's not about pressure, guys. Please take it. This is rules of the games, of the game. It's not about pressure. Even if you have 140, you need to build it up again until it cuts off. You won't hear the sneeze. You hear it like uh, when when truck sneezing, right? On the truck fly, it's on the air. You want to hear the sneeze. You want examiner hear the sneeze as well. You're building up pressure. How many times? How many? How many, how many times? How many times? Three times. This is first. Second time will be before you will start your brake test, and third time during the brake test before you will perform the tack test after you will do A, we will talk about that. Okay, so three times total, this is first time we can. Building up pressure, say it until what? Uh, building. We're building up pressure until governor cuts off. Between 120? 120? 120. 140, very good. We've checked those gauges. Yes. Next please. gauge. Next gauge will be uh, like this. <laughs> Oil. So once the air goes up to 120 and 140. 140, it will sneeze. It will cut off. There are two of them, primary and secondary. Mm -hmm. They work together, and secondary supplies primary. Primary losing air first, but secondary supplies it. I will I will tell you why it's important. 
this portion of your pre-trip is all about understanding of equipment. So please, today is very important, very important class. Maybe what the most important class. You need to understand, be active guys, ask questions, try to understand how does the system work. Because yesterday I was very good surprised. Vlad just understand the system and he explained what, how, how he checking it without even you know, any doubt or something. Because he understands how it works, how the, the spring brakes work how the air brake work, receivers, tanks, and stuff, you know, the, that's awesome. So, please, understand how it works. It's simple, it's real simple. But, anyways. Uh, so the only thing we do have out the flip, so it doesn't look out the flip. They're pretty sure, you know, once the air goes out to in between 120 and 140, the only thing we have to listen is to sneeze. Yeah. That's one bullet sneeze that indicates that my air gauges are working properly. Okay, two things. We yeah, have it cuts off between 120 and 140, which indicates that both my primary and secondary are working properly. On the a newer freeliners, uh, there is one gauge but two arrows, one black, one blue. So blue is secondary. <clears throat> okay, uh, another second gauge is what? Oil pressure. And the third one is something like this, right? Like this. Mm -hmm. And this one, and this one will be. So this is oil pressure. This is water temperature. Don't revolve it, don't revolve it. Don't say it's oil, oil temperature. Mm -hmm. What was your score? It's not oil temperature, it's what? Water. Oil, pressure. oil pressure. This is water temperature, this is oil pressure. They're checking oil pressure first. Explanation, same thing, same thing. It's rising to its operational range, warning light is off, which indicates it's working properly. Well, oil pressure will just not rising, it will, it will jump there and stay there, right? Every time you push it goes, <laughs> so that's how it works. But your line is, it's rising to its operational range, warming light is off, which indicates it's working properly. This is my water temperature. Rising to its operational range, warming light is off. Same thing. What is number four? Somebody remember? Yeah. It's, okay, it's voltmeter. We don't have um, you know, ammeters. Usually it's volt meters. I'll go on all of them. Three lines, all those uh, volt meters. Volt meter. Um, what is the voltage in the truck system? It's 14 volts. 10 volts. It's normal voltage. Yeah, I know. I know what you want to say. It's 12 volts batteries. <laughs> the normal working when batteries are new is so readings on the volt meter will be 14, 14 one or maybe 14.2. That means batteries are okay. The older your batteries are, the lower the voltage. When voltage drops to 13.6, oh guys, this is time. Do it now or are you gonna repeat? 13.6, that's for all trusted. Yeah. Okay, it's just for you, it's not for, for test. No. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's for you. It's for you. 13.6, replace batteries. Uh, when you get into the truck, let's say the truck is cold, you turn it on, uh, you put it in accessory, it reads 12, 7, because it was not it was not right? You, well, you're starting up the engine, it drops to 11.5 after we started the engine, right? Because it uses some power to it. And then it's rising in no time, I don't know, 10 seconds, 5 seconds. It goes to 14.1. If it didn't go um, to 14.1, that indicates that your alternator isn't charging. If it keeps dropping, <laughs> that means you got a problem with alternator. And the engine is going to stall. 
I'm explaining you how it works because probably we'll need to explain it to examiner. Okay? So, dark engine, cold engine, 12, 7, after start, 11, 5, 5 seconds, 14, 1. My alternator is charging, working properly. My, uh, my volts, my voltage is uh, rising, which indicates my alternator is charging. Okay? If it stays 11.5 and keeps dropping, yeah, you're in trouble. Can we Cut see the, the, the 11.5 and the dashboard? Yes, yes, yes. Um, we will use, we will be using uh, Cascadia, it's 99%. Okay, I got Cascadia, depending on which you do, metal or uh, tomatics, we got Cascadia, and we'll, what I'm seeing it about, we another Cascadia. Uh, on the dash, on the dash, you will need to go to the main screen. And, uh, so this is the dash on Cascadia. I will show you on the track, but answering your question. And there are a few pages, one of them home screen, and then blah, 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 blah some vehicle, and, blah, 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 and some, something else. You need to go to this screen, and on the first pages, so there are arrows on the only steering wheel. You choose indeed to the left and right, right until you get into the home screen, and then you're going up and down to choose the first page. And it will be some information, but what you're interested in in the very middle, it will be voltage. 14.1 volts. If it's not there, if somebody changed it, but I will say it. Okay? But the wall you need to go through the screen as well. This is volt meter. On the older vehicle, there is a volt meter. Like how the volt meter is there. <laughs> okay. So, it's five things to check on the cluster. We check four so far. Let's go through them again. Think number one, Dennis. Uh, door pressure. No. Air oh, I just. Air gauges. Come second. Oil pressure. Oil pressure. Outstanding. Water temperature. Okay, guys. We are ready. Number five is light indicators. Light indicators. So, what do you think? What light indicators we got on the dash? Right. High beams. And and what? Third and third signals. Four way flashers. Do we have low beams? No. 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 Well, on newer trucks, your dash will say your lights is on. It's not indicated. It's some information on the dash. It booms and then it disappears. Uh, or on most of them, when you turn the lights on, it will go dark. Right? Two modes, day and night, about the dash. That's how you can see that it's, but it's not light indicator. Plus on the papers it say that you need to check light indicators, which is high beam, their signals for the measures. This is number five. So air gauge, oil pressure, water temperature, uh, air, voltmeter, and uh, light indicators. Okay, this is it for cluster. So how many things in the cluster total? Then we go, one of my students uh, invented the scene. Then we're gonna go and swim. <laughs> because you, you're going to the windshield, you're checking windshield, you're going to the side, you're checking mirrors. You, you're checking the air horn and city horn. And, and that's it. So air horn, city horn, so I don't play. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to remember this way, okay, let's use it. Let's use it then. So windshield first, uh, it was five on the, on the cluster, and it will be four on the windshield, four. Okay, let's go through it. First, it's windshield, windshield itself. No cracks, no dents, no little stickers, weather seal is intact. Okay, second, windshield wipers. You will have the switch, 
slab on the on the left. If you will click it just once, it, it got it got like 15 different speeds. Just click it once, boom, it will go because it's done, right? Click it back. Don't leave it on. Otherwise, in 20 seconds, unexpected, it will go again. And every time it does, you're losing some credit, right? <laughs> in the eyes of examiner, because you don't know how to operate it. You know, track controls. <laughs> Make sure. Launch it. Once it started, click it back again. This is my windshield wipers. Okay, they're working properly. Then what you need to do, you're pushing it. <sighs> Another story. Just test. Test is going well. Everything is okay. Then student, the door is open. Student jumping out. Hey, Alex, your truck is garbage. The windshield fluid tank is empty. And yielding it. Calm down, dude. Go back. Push and hold it for like a minute now. So what happened? It's not, it's not our cars. In, the, in your car, you push it once, it starts spraying right away. It's just longer pipes. Okay? Longer pipes, more water. So you push it and wait. Once you see water, release it and say, this is my washer is working properly. But what can happen if you didn't wait until it will start spraying? You will release it. Then you will push it again, hold for three seconds, you will release it. Then again, you will get the water, you know, the air, air bubbles in the line. Okay, if you got air bubbles in the line, now you need to hold it, push it and hold for a minute. <laughs> before it will start spraying, okay? So make sure you hold it once, I will check it, I will make sure. You make sure that there is a virtual fluid in it, right, before your test, what you will forget. I will check it, I, I can't forget this one. <laughs> That's never happened before, but I do. So push it and hold until you see it spraying. Once you see the water, this is my washer. So we checked how many so far. Windshield itself, right? Then, wipers and washers. What is the last one? Is heater defroster. Heater defroster. Is it in that order or just one? Mine says heater defroster first and then wipers. It's, I mean, it's up to you. It, yeah, it doesn't matter. Make sure that you remember it's four. It's four for the windshield. If you want to bend your fingers. Okay. Uh, turn it on. To turn it on, the heater defroster on, what you basically do, you will need there are three knobs, right? One, two, three. Uh, this one is zero to eight. It's a speed, right? Six, four, four. Um, this one is position. So different position. And here it will be sign like this, right? <coughs> this is the heat of the frost. And here it's temperature. This is blue, this is red. This is the hottest. What you need to do, you need to put all three knobs to maximum speed, this one to the heater defroster, and this one to the hottest position. Put your hands next to the windshield you know, and say it's working properly. Don't wait until it will start blowing. You know, hot air. Yeah, I know it's winter, but sometimes we got 80 degrees <laughs> and on sun. Uh, true story, my son taking test in New Brunswick. When they coming back from the road portion, they say, oh, you passed, you passed. And the examiner, mm, I don't want to say her name. She was sitting roll down window like this, and she was <laughs> breathing like that. What the heck? It was a hot day, okay, it was 100 degrees. But she coming out, so what, what, what happened? He passed, okay, thank you very much. Okay. Hey, Nick, what's up? He's like, bad, like sweating, like, you know, who you right? I said, why am I sweating so much? And his seat is bad, it's a puddle inside. I said, dude, when I looked inside, dude, he forgot to turn off his defroster when he didn't even come. 100 degree day. I don't know how they didn't lose conscience during the test. <laughs> Both of them. 
please don't do it. Make sure once you did it, put your hand, make sure, boom, momentarily, it start working right away, you will hear it. Working properly. Booms, booms, booms. And adjust it for that. Accordingly to the weather. That makes it for some windshield, wipers, washers, and the roster. Almost done. It was five gig. So once again, emergency equipment, external light, cluster, five of cluster, four of windshield, mirrors, just mirrors, securely mounted, clean and functional, properly adjusted from inside. Air horn, electrical horn, that concludes my call. Oh my God. That's concluded my call. But we forgot the, the uh, in cat was called the emergency, the fire extinguisher and the No, we did not forget. I think it just came later. <laughs> we started with it. You're doing emergency equipment when you start in cab. You meet examiner outside of the cabin. Once you performed, you just completed doing coupling, right? You're stepping to the driver, driver's door. I'm saying, now I'm going to perform my in cab, but first I'm checking my emergency equipment, opening up the door. This is my fire extinguisher. Securing amount to properly charged. You don't have to say what does it mean properly charged. You don't have to say that it's in green zone. You don't have to check the date. It used to be a part of your test. Now, there is nothing in handbook that's saying that you have to do so. Climb inside of the truck, check what? Reflecting triangles, fuse box on the top. Ask examiner, could you please help me to check my external lights? Examiner steps in front, you're heading to the uh, driver's seat. Key is an accessory, putting key in accessory. Doing what? First, two clicks on the knob, putting it to the headlights. Thumbs up, turn it off. Flash the, head, uh, the high beams, thumbs up. Really. Left turn signal, thumbs up. Right turn signal, thumbs up, turn it off. Four flashers, thumbs up. Could you please help me and check tail lights? Examiner steps to the back. Look in the examiner into the mirror. Right? The same thing. Tail lights, thumbs up. Brakes, thumbs up. One signal, counter signal, another turn signal. Four reflectors. Examiner going to the passenger seat. Once examiner is there, remind me what we do. Sit belt. You hold it. Don't put it. Don't click it yet. Hold it in hands. Wait for examiner to have a seat. Examiner is on the passenger seat. This is my seat belt. No read, no freight, lunch is just as proper. Quick start, why is it quick start? It's already an accessory. Mm -hmm. Other than that, we will do it all already. Quick start, mention a gear slide, showed off and disappeared, right? Building up pressure, how, do we, how are we building up pressure? 1200 PM. Some, Examiner saying the Russian. Russian. Okay, wait, well, do more. It's okay, yeah, if you will do more RPM, what's gonna happen? It will build up pressure faster. From one hand, from other hand, what? It's higher, chat will be noisy, it will be loud. The engine, with the raving engine, it can be very loud. Remember, it's a 15 liter engine. You can miss what? Sneeze. So do 12. Oh, well, yeah, if you're getting instructions, you better do it. It's your test. <laughs> okay. We build up pressure. We hear, we hear sneeze. That indicates, so my governor cut off, but pressure was built. And it happened in 140, 140 PSI, which indicates that my air gauge was primary and secondary working properly. Uh, now, this is my oil. What? Oil. Pressure, pressure, not, not to well temperature, please. Oil pressure gauge. Warning light is it's rising to operational range. Warning light is off, which indicates it's working properly. This is my water temperature gauge. Rising to operational range. Warning light is off, which indicates that it's working properly. This is my voltmeter. It's rising, which indicates that my alternator is charging. 
Now I'm going to check my light indicator. Flash it. This is my um, high beam indicator, my 30 signals indicator, and my forward fissures. Now, my windshield. No cracks, no dents, no legal stickers, weather seal is intact. My wipers. Click, just one click, start going, one click back. Working properly. Push and hold on the side. Push and hold the same level. Push and hold. You see water. It's spraying, so in the case it's working properly. This is my heater defroster. All three of them to the proper position. Put your hand. Working properly. Adjust the back. Okay. Now, this is. No, nothing. It's it's working. No, it's working. It's working properly. That's it. You just click it on. It's working. You're checking if it's working or not. Nothing. Then this is my mirrors. No legal stickers. Clean, functional, properly adjusted to me. This is my air horn. This is my electrical horn. That can do this one. Okay. Shouldn't be too long. Now. We completed in cap. Our engine is running, right? Our engine is running. You just declared it. I concluded it, I'm going to perform my air brake test. Now you need to do this transformation <laughs> from one test to another. So um, what do we start, any guesses? What do we start our air brake? With. But the first thing we do. You say you already told me to tell them, right? Yeah. I'm doing, air test. I'm doing my air brakes. Okay, the first thing you do is what? <laughs> Build up pressure. Build up pressure. Okay, there are three major parts of uh, air brake test. Three major parts. First, it's test prep. Test preparation. Second, beer time, <laughs> because it's ale abbreviation. It stands for uh, applied, you like it, eh? <laughs> beer time, <laughs> applied, <laughs> applied, low air warning devices, emergency, uh, I mean, uh, emergency brake system test. And the last one is a tech test. Three major parts, okay? Believe it or not, everybody, for some reason, remembers this one, always good. Numbers, uh, time, um, whatever, for, for the data. It's not even the most dangerous, or dangerous from the point of failure. Okay, it's important, it's meat of the test, but guys, the most important and the most dangerous people always failing first one, this one. Just skipping the stuff, forgetting the stuff. Okay. So let's think again. It will be four things that you will need to do during the test preparation. The first step of every or sink. Sink number one, build up pressure. And let's talk about it a little bit, okay? What does it mean to build up pressure? Remember your air gauges. Ah, I will, I will draw the bigger one. So somewhere here it will be 100, somewhere here 120, 140, 80, 60, this is 100. Let's say, remember, what's going on with our engine after we complete it in cap? What's going on with our engine? It's running. You just did in cap, right? So what is, what our pressure is? Oh, well, 120. Somewhere there. 
um, you need to make it sneeze again. Remember, the second time when we're building car pressure, what do we need to do? We need to bring it to the sneeze. So how are you going to do this? Any guess? 1200 RPM. You do 12, I'm telling you what, I can see the future. <laughs> you, you push, you push your pedal. 1200 RPM. Freaking nothing happens. Five minutes later, it drops to 150. 1200 RPM. Colleagues, you're talking shit. So, what is there a leak somewhere? No, you need a fan or brake, probably. Is a fan or brake? Genius, dude. Okay, that's how it works. You're. Uh, your governor is set to work in some sector. It will turn on when your pressure will reach some, you know, okay, something, something that was set on. And it will, it will go off, it will sneeze, right? It will cut off when it reaches 120. And then you're using this air, whatever, whatever, adjusting seat, using your brakes. Uh, Whatever we're using, just leaking somewhere, right? right? Until it will drop to 100. So it's set to work between 100 and 120. 100 and 120. What happens is when it's reaching 120, it sneezes. You start using this air, you're using this 20 psi until it's reaching 100 again. Once it reaches 100, it starts building up pressure again until it's one volume. Now you're using it. That's how it works. Very important. Because other than that, you will be sitting looking at examiner and the readings, whatever. Help! Help! Sorry. Okay? You need to fan your brain. Very light. Pushings, very light. Why? Because engaged. springs, yeah, springs engage, and you can you know, damage their mercy. Yeah, just to, sh 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 just to drop there, don't slam it. You know? Bring your readings below 100, and it will start building. And then 1200 RPM, and it will start building it up again. Please, guys, questions at this point, very important. That's what's gonna, what is going to happen. You will, if you don't understand this concept, you will get in difficult situation in between these two tests. To look at the, the pressure, the pressure, you have to press the pedal? Not, not to the press, no, not just press it, not just push it. Few times and do it lightly, not too hard, so you won't damage the brakes because your parking brake, parking brakes engage, they pull. If you will engage, imagine your car, Right? It's, it's louder, like this. If you will tighten the brakes, and uh, it's different. And really kind of like wait like a couple of seconds too, and kind of let it catch up. Uh, you will work it out, but you will do it in practice. You'll see, shh, 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 like this. Just light pushes. And then when it goes 99, don't bring it to 80, you will delay your test. Nobody knows. Bring it to 99 PSI. And then 1200 until it's again. So number one we do. Well, what we do? Number one is we're building up pressure until it cuts off between 120 and 140. Okay, number two. We need to cut off engine. We're cutting off engine. Cut off, but put it in accessory. Why do you think we need to put it in accessory? Oh, uh, whenever you raise the brake size, you can see. You can see the gauges. Your gauges are dark. Yeah. Uh, air gauges will stop somewhere in some readings. <laughs> but you don't know if that's true or not. Okay. Why do you need to cut off engine? What do you, what do you think, Sid? Uh, safety. Safety. Uh, 
at this point at the ale during the beer time you're gonna figure out how much of air your system losing when you're pushing the brake pedal okay how much of air your system is losing this is first part of it L -E. how much of it is going to lose if your compressor constantly supplying air okay you got it right so you need to turn off the engine so stop your compressor from building up the air that's how you can see how much you lose Mm -hmm. uh, for example, you got a bucket right of water. There is a small hole. You need to understand how quick it's losing water, right? Okay, but there is a pipe. It's open and water is coming through. Can you check it? How quick it losing water? No. So you need to shut the pipe, and then you can understand. Okay, so the same thing. The same thing. Accessory because your cluster is, is dead. And here where it's very dangerous uh, to put it uh, to the battery instead of and that's where you can fail your test by forgetting that we cannot use battery position for the key by inerts you will click it all the way to the left but it's battery position remember oops oops this is off this is accessory start and this is better you're cutting off your engine right it was an accessory you're cutting off and you know instead of putting it to off wait until it stops and put it back in accessory you're doing two clicks three to battery and then one click puts it in off position test environment the nervous gas and you just didn't see that those lights didn't show up and you fail in your test. Okay. You got it, right? So instead of putting it from accessory, one click left, one click right, you do oh to the wall. And then one click forward puts it in off position. So in order to uh, turn on to the battery, first we have to off and then go to left? Yeah. Don't put it in bed. One click on the key, one click left. Wait a second until the engine will stop completely. Because if you do it right away, one click left, and right away one click right, it will just lock the engine and then it will keep, keep on waiting. So one click left, wait until it stops, like two seconds. And then click right. It will be not big, and then all these lights will show up. Come on, you wait, some of them go. And it's ready. Uh, you uh, okay? Here you need to mention ABS light. ABS light. Came on and off. First of all, yeah, came on and off. First of all, it's part of the test. You need to check your ABS system. Second, it's double check for yourself. If you see ABS light came on and went off, means guys, your engine. I mean, you 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 cut the engine and you put it in the proper position to access it. The key is in excess if you see it. Okay. Number four. Now, we will need to, in order to check our brakes, we will need to release parking brakes. Otherwise, they're dead. A piece of metal, right? We need to release them. So, number four will be release both brakes. Both brakes. It will be two brakes like this. Two. One yellow, one red. Push yellow, wait a second, then second, then push red, wait a second. When noise is gone, sound is gone, they're gonna stay. Because if you push one, this one popping up. If you push this one, you can do it forever. Just push one, wait a second, then push second, and hold the first one. Yeah, for a second or something. Okay, guys, now logically, what do you think? Number three is exactly make sure the chalk's placed. Why? You, because you're releasing brakes. These two knobs, let me show you in the picture. These two knobs, these two buttons, 
they work exactly as They're exactly as your parking brake in your car. You pull it to engage, you push it to disengage. Pull to engage, push to disengage. Okay? If you will push them, what's gonna happen to your truck? Uphill, if it, I mean, it was uphill, it's gonna roll down. So we check if our chocks in place. Chocks in place. Right? Right? What do you think? Or if you will, can remind me, when, when, at what point we did put our chucks? Before we start uh, any section that we put. Exactly. But we are humans, we could forget. Right? So that's why. Number three is look outside. Look, you don't have to go outside. Leave the truck and look outside. You will be able to see and make sure the chokes are there. Preparation. Yes, preparation. What do you think? Two major mistakes that lead into the failing of the air brake tests. Both of them are here on the first step. One of them, forgetting to cut off the engine, and another one forgetting to Release the brakes. Even here, two, three people will do it. Best students. Forget it. I got, I got guy, he got, uh, he professor. Professor, is that same. He got DVD, so smart. Like 50 times smarter than me. And he was lucky. He, he learned it in no time. I pre-tested him in no time. But on the test, Alex, I don't know why, he forgot to release the brakes and started doing the hail without releasing the brakes. If it happened to you, once again, test environment, you're nervous, what are we gonna do? Oh, I forgot to release the brakes. I'm gonna start my brakes over again. Don't ask, just do it. How do we start to lower again? Make sure you pull the brakes, build up pressure, start up the engine, build up pressure, and start it. Build up pressure, cut off, put it in accessory, make sure it is light, came on and went off. Uh, make sure the chuck's placed. Release both brake. Now we're advancing. Once you did, you did all this four of preparation, we're advancing to the ale time, to the beer time. Beer time. It's not always was beer time. It was vodka time. It wasn't vodka time. It was sale time. It was more appropriate for it for our profession. It used to be sale. We did static test. Static, it means you just measure how much of, of how many PSI your system is gonna lose if you don't do it. <coughs> so uh, it was one more minute added for your test. So they, they just canceled it. It's no more. They removed static, so now it's sale. A, what A stands for? Apply it. Applied. Now, let me talk a little bit about applied test. During this part of the test, we're gonna check how many PSI our system is gonna lose. We will push the brake pedal, pressurize it. How many PSI is gonna lose during how many seconds? 60 seconds, one minute. Okay. 60 seconds. How many PSI or four PSI? You we should not lose more than four PSI during one second. If you're doing everything properly, it will never lose more. But we will go through some scenario right now. Interesting scenario. Okay, you need to be prepared for this one as well. So 60 seconds. Who is gonna measure 60 seconds? You will ask examiner, could you please help me and measure 60 seconds for me? Two options, two possible answers. It's not about examiner being you know, not really nice to you. No, no, it's just in case. Examiner wants to see if you're able, for example. 
you know, to check yourself. In most cases, they'll say, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, go ahead. Let me know, okay, now. Uh, that's option number one. They'll say, okay, they will time, time you for 60 seconds. In some cases, they will say, no, you need to time yourself. Um, there is a like sneaky situation because uh, what are you gonna use to check yourself, to time yourself? It's not going to be a phone. Exactly, not your cell phone, please. Not your cell phone. We got situation when it was it wasn't a problem, but yes, said hey dude, you're using. Self hand hold it, cell phone in a commercial vehicle, when you're operating commercial vehicle. It's not just violation, it's fifteen thousand bucks of penalty. It's combined fifteen thousand dollars of penalty. Uh, for you to not do it or use it. Never do the hand hold it, cell phone. During the test. Um, in other situations, examiners are okay. Yeah, absolutely. Well, why why didn't you check yourself on, on, on your cell phone? Exactly. One of the guys, big friend of mine, young boy, one years old, um, getting ready for the test. Um, during the, the classes and stuff, I always was saying, guys, go and buy in a Walmart 10 bucks watch. Please, 10, it's not 10 bucks, but buy 10 bucks. <laughs> 10 bucks, whatever, stop watch or whatever. Have it on you, get ready. Okay, because it will come to this point. You will need to do the very test. So. And he didn't get it, he failed the test, because he didn't buy the watch, but he got scared to use cell phone, and I'm not blaming him for this, <laughs> because, you know, he can get in trouble, right? Uh, what he was doing, he did uh, Mississippi 1, Mississippi 2, <laughs> Mississippi 3, <laughs> an examiner failed him for doing 57 seconds instead of a minute. Mississippi, but I was saying, oh, dude, it's all standing. You, you're more accurate than most of Swiss watches, you know? <laughs> three, three seconds of mistake. But this mistake that they will fail you for. Because the test saying what? 60, not 59, not 61. 60 seconds. Okay. And please get the watch. Well, mm, you, you didn't get the watch, at least put your cell phone somewhere on the dash and do it like this. Don't, don't do it hold it. Start it and then it's meaning just release it. But it's better to get your cell phone. Okay? So, we did A. What is next one? L. What L stands for? Low air warning. Low air warning what? Devices. Devices. What does it mean, devices? It's something, right? Devices, the good devices. This device, this phone, this device. Well, you phone device. device. Yeah. The, the, what the, what are those devices? What exactly? Like the tanks or the pressing? The the, uh, the, uh, no, the brakes. The two tanks, you know, the, the buttons that will pop out. Mm -hmm. It's another part of it. It's emergency brake system. Mm -hmm. But what is low air warning devices? Outstanding. Butter and light. B and light on the dash. That's low air warning devices. Nothing has happened yet. Your system didn't engage your parking brakes yet. But it's letting you know, but giving you the butter and light that something wrong and the system is losing pressure. So you need to pull over. Okay, that's why, that's what the point of the system. Okay, let the driver know that you need to pull over and then perform the emergency stop. Uh, it's a breakdown, it's a leakage or something. Some of your hoses is broken or something. It happened to me, like 75 miles per hour on the highway. And one of my you know, hoses, the, the major hoses underneath the vehicle get broken. It was a quick repair already. Wow. It's intense, you know. <laughs> and it drove from in <laughs> So low air warning devices are power and light. Okay? What you need to do, you will need to fan your brake. What will it be? 
drop your pressure until you see what? What? No, not until 55. And this is important. Until you see buzzer and light. Ah, sure. Until you see buzzer and light. So 55 is part of explanation for it. Yes, numbers is okay. But you fanning your break until you see buzzer and light, not until 55. Sometimes it's 55, but buzzer and light is not on. Didn't activate. What are you going to do? I'll like to try to shoot. I'll try to shoot. So you're fanning until you see buzzer and light. And what you say is, my low air warning devices are working properly. They both activated. What the word? What is the word? Yeah. Around 55. Not before. Not below. Not above. Not at. Around. It can be 60. It can be 50. It can be whatever. Um, different situation. Different. It was different situation. I told you, right? I talked like almost 800 people already at this point. Everybody. All, everybody I told you, working in other schools or in my school. And during this time, you know, Couple times it happened. Okay, well, why you didn't tell me what, what was exact number? If so, say yes, exact number was 57 or 53 or 50 or 40, 49. But it was around 55, so I need to make sure by the handbook that my lower warning device is activated around 55. Would that, would that be a proper activity? Yeah. Yeah, if so, it's very seldom. Usually it's okay because it's from the handbook and nobody's trying to catch you. Okay, E. Emergency brake what? Emergency brake test. Brake system test. You're testing brake system. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So the, the button uh, comes out. Around, 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 and it's very important. I'm glad you asked. Around, 50 around the buzzer comes up, um, right? Buzzer, you know what the buzzer? Buzzer is sound. Beep. Sneezing. The, the, uh, beep. No, no. Okay. Buzzer is beep. It's sound. You will hear it. We'll do yeah. it practically. Noisy. I will make you do it like hundred times. Don't worry. <laughs> just, just take it. It's buzzer. Beep. Like and light on the dash. It's red light. Okay, Next, uh, on the air gauge, on the top of the air gauge, it will be like on the on some vehicles, it's a red triangle on the front of the dash. Oh, okay. That, at that point, the, at that point, the, the buzzer comes on and it around it, around yeah. it's five, right? But the, the things fell up about uh, between twenty to forty-five, right? Wait, I mean, don't mix up flies and cutlets. You know, flies they fly around the cutlets. Don't mix up all together. Yeah. Let's separate them. We're talking about flies or we're talking about cutlets now? We're talking about flies. It's low air warning devices. You're firing your brakes until you see buzzer and light. That indicates your low air warning devices are working properly. Now we're going to talk about cutlets. It's next step. It's okay. emergency brake system. <clears throat> what is, so it's emergency brake system. If you're being uh, asked, not emergency brakes, how do you call these brakes? What are those brakes? Service brakes? Oh, emergency and service brakes. You think it's emergency and service. What is the pedal? Pedal brake. Service. It's tractor and trailer. This is tractor and trailer what? No. Yeah. Tractor and trailer service is there. Tractor and trailer what? Yes, yeah. no, no, no. What brakes? Yeah. This yellow is tractor. Red is trailer, but what brakes? What is the name of the brakes? Oh, service. Service is pedal. You just use pedal is your service brake. Pedal is your service, right? It's oh, the main way, right? Yeah, okay. Which you use when you're not okay. But this is. Is it emergency brakes? We're checking emergency brake system. So both two of these brakes will pop out 20 to 45, right? Yes. But what is the name of the brakes? Guys, it's parking brakes. Parking oh. brakes. Oh. Parking. If you're being asked, what brakes are those? Don't say it's emergency. Emergency brake system using parking brakes. 
And it's funny, Vlad just asked me yesterday and said, why on the red one is written not for parking? It's parking brake, not for parking. <laughs> it's really it's stated, not for, not for parking. Yeah, parking brake, not for parking. Well, uh, using only one of it is not, is not there. It's not for parking. You cannot park your vehicle using just one. Uh, that's what people do a lot. You will be surprised. I explained just one situation when, um, uh, for example, trucks, most of the trucks, they locked for, um, uh, there is this idle shut off site. So three, five minutes and truck will shut itself if you leave it in idle. But when it's cold or warm weather, you know, it's well, not enough to stay uncomfortable. To stay when it's 120 degrees in the truck or without you know, engine running. So, and people override it by pushing the, putting on the trailer brakes and pushing the tractor brakes, you know? So trailer holds the vehicle, tractor released, and it's not shutting off the engine. You know? I'm not saying you need to do this, it's unsafe. So that's why it's taken, not for parking. Or some people, they just do the engaging trailer brakes, disengaging tractor uh, parking brakes to adjust brakes, for example. So, no, use the chokes, use try to avoid it. If you need to remove the, the idle shut off to be removed, just contact your company and say, guys, I can't drive like that, right? It's impossible. It doesn't go together with the life. <laughs> Stay in Nebraska, minus 30. In the truck, when the truck is off. Okay? So, what brakes are those? Yeah. Parking Park brakes. Brake. Parking brakes. We checking emergency, what? Service. Brake. Yes. Yes. What? System, emergency brake system is going to use what brakes? Trailer and tra tractor parking brakes. Please, you need to understand the concept. It's not emergency brakes. To say I'm checking my emergency brake and point on them can lead to uh, your test fail. Okay? So it's parking brakes, and my emergency brake system is using parking brakes. What are we doing? We're finding it. Until what happens? Both of them popping up. Both of them. Okay? If just one of them popped out, usually red one, trailer is popping out, yellow stays in. What we need to do? Keep firing it until second. Sometimes it takes another 10, 15 pushes. Sometimes it's a lot. And it comes closer to 20. So I won't do that at the same time. Sometimes, in most cases, yes. But the, uh, for example, this is uh, not that what happened to us. That what happened. And, and if it, if one of them didn't pop up, if only red popped out, never ever whatever happened, touch it with your hands because it's test disruption. You will be disqualified. It's not even failure, it's disqualification. You cannot start your test all over again after this. Disqualification, disruption of the test. Don't touch it. Whatever happened, yeah, don't touch it. What happened? Three of my students, the weather dropped overnight. It was December, January, a year, two years ago. I got three students taking tests the next day. Um, last night it was like 60, 65. Overnight it turned to 31, 32, so around freezing. And I just warned them. I, I said to them what I'm saying, you know, and I warned guys, whatever happened, don't touch it with your hand. With your, with your hand. Three students. Uh, we get into the test, the first one, finding the brakes, it didn't pop out, one of them popping out, he pulling another one by the hand. Disqualification. Second one does the same. Third one, doing the same. But the most funny is, second student, student knew what the first one failed on, because of course, you know, after it happened, we got together, so what's up? Oh, I pulled it with him. Second, new. And third one, new by first and second. But the third one said, hey, Alex, you never told me that they shouldn't. <laughs> first one. So, <laughs> you never told me that they shouldn't. Yeah. I say, it's never to touch it. Never touch it when you do emergency brake system test. Never touch it with anything. That happened. You know why, they, why it happened? Why they, they pulled it with him? Because they were watching on the air gauges. They were looking at the air gauges. 
Yes, when you're doing low air warning device test or, or applied brake test, you pay all attention to the air gauge, right? And to the cluster. Well, uh, here you count how many PSI you lost, and here you're just looking for the battery light, right? But in case of emergency brake system, you need to look on the parking brakes. All attention, look at them. Don't, just don't even look to the cluster on the parking brake. You need to see this very moment. If the weather is dry, if, you know, like, like today, they will pop out with the, with the pop. They will click out. And it's so easy to see. But if it didn't pop, pop out, the yellow one, if it stays in, when it's 20 PSI, it's popping out so quietly, it's very difficult to see. So these two students, they, or three students, they were trying to make sure, automatically, by reflex, to make sure that it's popped out or not. Okay, and they pull it. Don't pull it, whatever happened, okay? Keep pushing, very quietly it will pop out. Finally, closer to 20 PSI now. So it did pop out, and they thought it did pop out? Uh, it, no, they, the red team. They actually did pull it? But they were looking, that happened because they were looking at the cluster. They were looking at the cage, they didn't look there. And they hear the sound, but they didn't know which one exactly popped out. You got it, right? That would happen. Not because they didn't tell them, not because they didn't see it. Don't be one of them. Look at the buttons, please. Look at them, when you're doing emergency brakes. Not to the cluster, to the brakes. Make sure so you're you not on the pop out. Yep. Would like remove it? Don't touch it, it will pop out itself yes. on your fan. It will pop out. Yeah, some, in most cases at the same time. But sometimes yellow stays in. So look at it so you'll see. Now, another interesting moment. So uh, when are they going to pop out? Between 20, 20 and 45. Inside. In between 20 and 45. Numbers are very important. Don't say 25 to 40, you don't want further first. Don't say 20 to 40. Don't say 45 to 20. Is that the way to say it? Okay. All right. Another interesting situation. So, when you're doing applied brake test, okay? Um, you shut the engine when it was 120, right? You, by the time you, when you push the brakes, uh, by the time the minute passed, okay, you release the parking brake, you push the pedal brake, by the time the, you know, the minute passed, your pressure will be, I would say, 75 to 85 PSI. That's what is going to happen. And even though your arrow is here now, you're declaring the examiner. Yes, uh, so my system didn't lose more than 4 PSI during 60 seconds, which indicates that my system was working properly. And the examiner goes, wait a minute. <laughs> 120, 140, and 80. No, it didn't drop 4, it dropped 40 or 45. Remember, option one, well, major option. Oh, they got to the shit. Jump out of the top of the No. Uh, what really happened is, and you will need to, to be ready to explain it. When you're releasing the brakes, okay, you're supplying air pressure to, into all the hoses, right? All your air system. It opens the brake chamber, every single one. So you're losing at least 15 PSI just to push the buttons, just to release the brakes. When you push the brake pedal, you multiply it two, three times. You're losing another 15, 20 PSI. Okay? And in 60 seconds, when you release the button, it will stay the same. It's not going to go off. Okay, the pressure. So that makes it 85. Okay? You got it, right? Mm -hmm. Important. Be prepared to explain it. 
Uh, sometimes they can ask, so why? You said it's four, but it's not four, it's 40. Because I'm losing uh, 15 to 20 PSI when I'm pushing parking brakes, and I'm losing another 15 to 20 when I'm pushing the service brake. That makes it, I was checking, so in, in fact, you need to check how many PSI your system is going to lose after you pushed your service brake pedal. After you pushed it. Now, how are you going to push it? Firmly, slamming, stapling, all the way with full stangs. The stronger, the more pressure you will apply to it, the less PSI you're going to lose. The worst what you can do is push your brake pedal. Then you feel like after 15 seconds, you feel like uncomfortable. You want to change position of your foot. You're, you're releasing it. <laughs> and you push it again. You found it once and examine the mouse. You just drop 10 PSI from us. So it's not four for you. Unless you will start your brakes all over again. Okay, Philly. Yeah. And you will push it. Find the position, jam it between the floor pedals, you know, your foot between the floor and the pedals, so it will stay pushed. Don't release it next minute. And remember, it must be minute. I got a few guys who felt it by doing one of them, he pretended that it was minute. He said he did 15 seconds, another one did 30 seconds. It's minute, it's 60 seconds, okay, when you're timing yourself. 60 seconds, always. Strong hold. Okay, we finished here. We going to tag test. What is the point of the tag test? What what breaks? What now we testing parking and parking both both tractor and trailer. And what and service? Service is the pedal. Parking is parking, right? So imagine yourself. How are you going to check if your parking brake and your car is working properly? You're going to pull it, right? lock it, and try to, to drive, right? If you cannot go, if your car doesn't go, it means it's working, right? We do the same thing, but we got two different brakes, one for trailer and another for truck. We're disengaging one, we're pushing one to check, you know, another one, and then we're pulling this one, pushing that to check. That the first one. That's it, that's how we do it, okay? But, there is something that we need to do as for preparation itself. Preparation portion. First of all, first thing we do, what they say, build up pressure. Because what's preventing us from driving now? Say it. What doesn't let us do? If there is no pressure and we didn't release the brakes, it will be blocked. That's number one. So build up pressure, how, how does it sound? Build up pressure until it cuts out between 120 and 140, right? That's number one. What else doesn't let us go? What do you think? Chucks. Oh, chucks. Second, you need to release chucks. And um, that's important. It's unsafe driving. If you're going over the chunks, it's unsafe driving. First, you can get this Plus, you destroy the chunks. They cost like an arm and a leg. I told you the story, right? And one of my guys, okay, Alex, I, 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 I failed. What did you fail? I failed brakes, but okay, I, I'll see I'll see you next time, so I, I need to, to run. Okay? I'm going to the truck to check, but get it ready to make sure the papers and everything is still in the truck and stuff. And then we see there is a pile of a piece of, uh, I mean, rubber, rubber pieces like this big. <laughs> he was going over the chocks like five times. <laughs> I destroyed both chocks to these big pieces, you know. And the, but the most funny, the, the funniest part of it, he collected it and put, <laughs> and put it back where it was. <laughs> Don't destroy it. Don't destroy the, the chocks because there are, there are students that are going to take tests after you, plus uh, you won't destroy uh, plus, everybody is laughing. Uh, loser. <laughs> so make sure you will put the chunks back. Don't leave them. Don't put them aside. Don't leave them. Put them back. This is our chunk, so we need to use them because it's 
more students taking tests probably today. So this is preparation part. Now what? We're gonna test which which one first? Parking brakes, right? Yeah. Parking brakes. Which one we're gonna test first? Tractor. Tractor. How are we checking tractor parking brakes? Releasing the trailer. Releasing the trailer. Trailer is which what color? Yeah. The red. Red or yellow? Yellow, yellow is what? Yeah. I tell yeah. <laughs> Yellow is tractor, red is trailer. Push the red one. And so leave yellow engaged. Now we will try to, to go, right? If parking brake won't let us, means it's working. It holds, in, holds the vehicle, so working properly. You release the trailer, put it in drive, or put it in third gear, release the clutch smoothly or apply the gas in case it will be transmission and just tug it. You feel the tractor frame bending. Uh, the engine is so powerful so it will be able to drive through the even even through the you know, parking brakes engaged. So don't do it pedal to the metal, foot to the floor. <laughs> it will probably go like that. So just a little bit, you feel it start bending, push the clutch again, so it's working properly. Now what we do, we're checking the trailer, right? You pull the trailer, you push the tractor. Do the same, working properly. Now we need to check, what next? Service. service. To check service brake. We need to release parking brakes, all of them. So which one is pushed, which one is pulled, push it, make sure both of them push. You will need to accelerate to five miles per hour. Five miles per hour. Five miles per hour, it's a lot. It's very quick. It's, in most cases, honestly, we don't have room there at the, the places where we're taking this. It's not enough room. There is a maneuver area if you will accelerate to five miles per hour and check your brakes, you will be right next to them. So, a go, something go three plus miles, miles per hour, so, okay, maybe not all five. And when you're pushing, when you're applying brake, don't make it that, don't make it too hard. Just stop it, stop the vehicle, stop it quickly, but don't make it that's it. And last thing we do, it's a declaration. First of all, we declare that my vehicle didn't pull left or right. And it stopped the vehicle smoothly, which indicates that my service brake is working properly. That concludes my air brake test. Put it in neutral, pull the brakes, and wait for the verdict. At this point, the examiner will tell you if you passed it. Okay. Questions? So logically, to check how much of our of, of, of the pressure our system is losing, we need to have what? Air pressure pill. Right? Our brakes our engine shut, so it won't supply any air for it. Uh, brakes released because when parking brakes engaged, those are springs. So the brakes are a piece of metal, dead. Nothing happens. Right? After we did this, we're gonna do applied brake test. We will ask examiner to check us to time us for 60 seconds. We will apply the brake pedal. Very good push. And in about 60 seconds, we're going to declare our system didn't lose more than 4 psi. Okay, readings on our air gauge will be 40 psi less. What are we going to say? Oh, I'm no. sorry, I need to talk to you, to my instructor. Right? <laughs> I need to bring another track. <laughs> no, I mean, when. Uh, when you're doing a plank, when you're doing a plank, it more four. it's losing more than four every time. Can, can we say that uh, no, so 
or uh, or is like uh, when the credit uh, the credit so. from when the credit goes. Yeah, can we say that? Like, don't say it unless you be you've been asked. Let me let me explain it one more time. Uh, so it was 120 when you built up, right? When you cut cut off the engine, it still was 120. Yeah. I it's 120 that. until here. So number four of preparation makes it minus 20 psi. When you're applying, it's another minus 20 psi. Uh, you you still explaining? My system didn't lose more than four psi. If you didn't ask, wait a minute. Reading right now is 80. Yeah, it was 120. So why is that? Then you explain. On the uh, yes, yes, ma'am or sir. Uh, it, that's how it works. Um, I use my prayers when I release the brakes. Now when I apply, I lose another 20. So I was checking how much of a pressure my system loses after I push the brake pedal and the arrow stabilized. When you push an arrow stabilized by instruction, by by you know by the point of common sense, that's when you're checking how much it's, okay, you pushed it, it's stabilized, and then you shouldn't lose more than 4 PSI. If you lose more than that, there is a damage, there is a leak. Okay? Important moment, very important moment. Then, keep fanning until what? Bother and Bother and light. Don't uh, wait until it's 55. No, it's not 55. Another thing, another interesting thing, just trying to explain you guys what, what to expect. So, this is your air gauges. Uh, primary carrying to, to 55. Both buzzer and light started sound. Here, you just take your foot off, start explaining, and then it goes off, both of them. And it's quiet, and it stops. No bother, no, no light. What happened, what do you say? Huh? You got a little bit of air pressure back. How? Because, because you got secondary and primary. Primary is losing air first, using air from primary. Secondary goes after it because secondary is supplying it. When it will be 55 here, it will be something like 60 here. Not much of a difference, but it's still a difference. So after you see buzzer and light, do a couple more pushes, like one or two. Make sure that secondary is there somehow. Okay, or if it happened, just hit it a couple times and say, okay, secondary is supplied my hand. You just, just Okay. Then, what we do? Tuck test, building up pressure. How many times we build up pressure before during the test? This is number three. Okay, the total is three. We're building it up for what? To have pressure or to hear sneeze? To hear sneeze. We don't care about pressure. We don't care. We're just saying, okay, it sneezed, it cuts off between 120 and 140, but it's all about sneezing and pressure. Remove chokes when there is a release. Mm -hmm. Remove chokes. Right? Then we're checking parking brakes. Tractor parking brake first. To check tractor, we need to push which one? Trailer. We need to push yellow. Is it, is it uh, tractor? This is tractor. If you want, if you want to check tractor, you leave it on, right? And you pushing red one. Now, if you go, you checking this one. To check tractor, you leave it on. So you push trailer to check tractor. Tagging it, pulling red, push yellow, tagging. And boss adventure. Push boss, go, hit the brake, hit the brake, and it didn't pull that right. And this 
stąd na jej głos musty adaptują pracę. Ok? Alright guys, we finished a little earlier today, but you know, pretty much it, please. Um, work on it, learn it first, put it on the papers, understand order, one follows another. We cannot cut off engine before we build up pressure, can we? No. We cannot, okay, chocks, you can check chocks at any point, just make sure chocks there. It just logically, these two go together, right? you, you cannot cut off engine before you build up pressure, that's why one follows another. And here's the same, before you release brakes, just have this paranoia, if I will release brakes, the truck can roll. Even automatic truck with automatic transmission, the transmission is not like in our cars, when you, when you release the brake, it starts rolling, no. Truck with automatic transmission, it's, it's automatic transmission, it's the same transmission, it's the same manual transmission, same standard transmission, but there is a robot called shifter on the top of it. Shifter disengaging clutch and putting the, the stick for you to the middle gear. And a computer on the top of the robot. So it's it's not automatic. It's still it's robotic transmission. It's not automatic. It, it's taken from the Formula One. <laughs> In cars, it's different system. It's like oil bath and different, you know, diameter, you know, bar, and it goes, you know, back and forth. It's different here. So okay. So if you if you in neutral. Even though it's track with automatic transmission, and you will release the, yeah, that will roll, that will roll. Okay, so make sure chokes there, and then release the brakes. Once you release them, then we can go for the beer time. Hey, ooh, 60 seconds. Don't use the phone. Don't use the phone. Don't put the cell phone. Get watch. I got it somewhere, but I'm, I'm thinking that I traded my car. I got a bucket of watches, of the cheap watches. Students who were passing the test, they were just gifting to them. So this is for future students. And I lost this bucket, guys, I let you know. <laughs> so, jet watch, okay. Uh, 60 seconds for PSI. Be prepared to explain why it's not 116 after A, right? Why it's 80. Okay. Low air warning, what? Low air warning. What? Low air warning. Low air warning. Devices. Buzzer and lights are devices. You're checking devices. In case of E, emergency, you're checking what? You're checking system. Emergency brake system. This is low air warning devices. You're fanning your brake until what? Bother and light. Come on. They will activate when? Around 55. Keep fanning. Check emergency brake system. Keep fanning until you will make sure that both of them and we're looking on the parking brakes. All attention to the parking brakes. Boom, boom. They both activated. In between 1 and 45 PSI, which indicates my emergency brake system is working properly. And now we're going to the tech test. Just tech test preparation portion, which is building up pressure, removing chokes. Uh, which one goes first? Well, nobody is going to fail you if, if you will remove chokes first and then build up pressure. But it's taken from experience. Guys, what's going on in your cabin after emergency brake system? Uh, what's, what's going on? You hear the buzzer. You see the light? Light is still light, but buzzer, it's annoying. You know, the sooner we will remove this buzzer from the cabin, the less annoying <laughs> for the examiner rates, um, uh, build up pressure first, remove chokes. Only then you can move your brake. Before you will touch the brakes, make sure you do it all. If 
fasten your seat belt before you enter it. Another seat. Okay. Mm -hmm. And pretty much it. Okay. Waiting for you to be ready. And try to come. Pre test on it so we can continue. To the front portion. Okay. Questions? No questions. That's it for today, guys. Should we test uh, Texas on this stuff for next week's schedule, or should we just go? Well, it's only two lessons left. Two lessons left. I don't like to schedule you guys right after we finish the major course because let's finish up this pre-testing on this one. Okay. And then closer to the driving because it's a theory for driving. In few words, what to expect on the next two classes. Say Monday. We will learn, yes, it will be Monday, Tuesday in the morning. Those classes Monday, Tuesday in the morning, but what to expect? We will learn how to do a straight line, upset, and parallel parking. For straight line, what you need to do? Short moves on the steering wheel, right? Constantly checking your mirrors, proper adjustment of your mirrors. I will teach you what, what speed you need to go with. What to look at, you all experience in drivers, guys. If you know what to look at, it will be easy for you. It's only one problem. You don't know what to look, what to, what to compare. What, what to compare with what, you know, to drive a car. I will explain how the trailer will be reacting on your on the rotation of the steering wheel. It's different. It's opposite from your car. It's different. How to see how much, and, and, and so give you theory for this one. For the offset, we will do this is, Step number one. Step number one means you need to understand what you're doing on the steering wheel, what are your actions, and what is gonna be your next stop. First, you need to pull forward. Okay, this is step number one. Now, you're rotating steering wheel to a certain side. Boom. You rotated it by a certain way, I mean, to the metal, holding it there. Okay, this is step number two, and so on, until you're in the proper spot. The same thing for parallel parking. I will teach you, I will learn, and I will pretest you. But it's good to do this portion right before driving. We're almost done at least half of the pretest. Okay? When you know what to do, it gets like that. It's fun. Fun, fun. Okay? Thank you guys for coming. See you next time. See you.